well, I'm very frustrated with this terrible device. The thing is, it worked. I was able to live stream my Switch, live stream Super Mario Maker 2, which is the only way people even watch my streams if I switch stream that game. And now this thing just simply won't work, and I don't know why. The only difference is that this cord that I'm using, which fits in here perfectly, no problem, isn't the original cord that came with. It, could that be the reason? Because if it is, it doesn't make any sense. It's, it fits in there fine, and it plugs into the computer no problem. When it does work, it gives me the false hope that it's working, but it works for three seconds and then stops. This makes me hate streaming, because I have to deal with crap like this. I'm sick of it. I mean, I've heard there's the Elgato, which is a lot more expensive than this thing, and this thing's been trustworthy. It's been working for years. But lately, it just won't work. Um, I've heard the Elgato. It's more expensive. Maybe I'll consider that, because this is not working out for me anymore. And Googling it doesn't work. I can't find anything that helps me with this. Every time I Google my problem with this, it just shows videos of, oh, uh, somebody unboxing and how to set it up and all this stuff. I already know that crap. Anyways, enough of that. Hopefully... This video I'm about to react to will definitely cheer me up because I'm just tired of it all. Um, maybe I'll just only stream off my PC from now on, even though people don't really watch those. Because I wanted to stream my Switch, wanted to stream Mario Maker 2, it's the only way people watch my streams, but... Well, I guess I just gotta suck it up and accept that I have to remain unlucky and unsuccessful when it comes to live streams because now even my own devices I'm supposed to live stream with won't work. Anyways, uh, I already got this uploaded. I could delete. I could delete. It's fine. Let's uh, react to Scott the Waz. I'm sure this will calm me down. I'm not a soda drinking guy. In fact, I prefer Pepsi over Coke. But I'm going to drink some caffeine because I have ADHD. I'm hyperactive naturally. Caffeine calms me down. All right, let's do this. Hey, y'all. Scott here. It's just not enough. I need okay. more! I want people to look through my window and see a bunch of garbage and say, that looks like a fun house to break into. So I was shifting between two options. I was thinking my first wow. accessory <laughs> nab would be uh, a window. But this one had deal or no deal. This okay. is the Nintendo DS. And this is the Nintendo DS now. Handheld gaming has always no. been Nintendo's sweet spot. Their home consoles, they simply don't believe in roofs. The Game Boy, Game mm. Boy Advance, Nintendo 3DS, and Nintendo Switch, all incredible successes in their own special ways. But right in the middle was the Nintendo DS, releasing in 2004. This was one of Nintendo's most triumphant accomplishments. And it showed that it they didn't is. even need three screens to do it. Dual screens, <laughs> microphone, touch yeah, base, screens. Game Boy Advance compatible, it was everyone's dream. Yeah. And the game library really struck a great balance between hardcore and casual titles, mm -hmm. which was something that the Wii attempted. It was fruitless. With a full suite of buttons on the bottom touch screen being success. incredibly useful in many cases, more hardcore titles didn't feel completely out of place here. On the Wii, the more hardcore titles, their entire gimmick was, I'm a hardcore title on the Wii. Like, but the Wii That's was a phenomenon, fun, selling over 100 million units. I personally always considered that to be the more popular system. Or at least not. it felt like it at the time. No, you see, nope. everybody owned a Wii. Everybody owned a DS. And four of them. 150 yeah. million plus sold. That is insane. One of the best selling platforms of all time. Of course, being a portable unit with four revisions definitely helped that number. The whole family can share a Wii, but each member needs a DS for every finger. I personally owned a white <laughs> Nintendo DS Lite and went out of my way to ensure I got the DSi. So I can at the very least confirm while the DS family sold 150 million plus, subtract one from the user count. The long and short of it is, the Nintendo DS was a monumental success, even during the Wii's generation where that felt like the big deal, the DS ended up being 50% more of a big deal. And if the Wii had all these accessories and plastic add-ons made for it, run. The absolute... The one and only video game system in existence to have sold more units than the Nintendo DS is the PlayStation 2. 
You can look up on Wikipedia. It's very easy to find this information. Nerve a Nintendo not including all this in the product at launch. The Nintendo DS had a lot of potential for add-ons. You can't look at this hole and not fill it. Like, oh my <laughs> god, you can add anything here. Footrest. But we can't start talking about accessories until we talk about accessories. And first one up, my college thesis. Almost <laughs> as notable as the inclusion of two screens was the Nintendo DS's touchscreen. The bottom one here was susceptible to abuse. This was the touchscreen, unlike modern ones. <laughs> Diddy Kong Racing DS. I sold that game because I didn't like that game anymore. I beat it very easily. I like the original N64, but the DS one, the problem with it is that um, to do super starts, it doesn't require timing. The press of the A button requires the touch stylus on the touch screen. Because of that, I ended up scratching the screen bad f from that one game alone. So yeah, I had to sell that game. Had to get rid of it after beating it. And... <laughs> sucked. Had to replace my DS. I mean, you can still see on it, but it's got such a scratch. It's got, it's so scratched up. Because when you're in the race car, you have to do this with the touch, with the stylus, to make the wheel go faster and you get a super start. With the airplane, you have to spin like this. That one's not so bad, but the other one, you're like scratching the screen, basically. The um, hovercraft, not bad. You just blow into the microphone. I wish they had a better way to super start your car in that game. It wasn't multi-touch and required more precise input, which is why using a bowling ball just didn't work. You could use your fingers, but the screen worked best <laughs> with a smaller input, which is where the DS stylus comes into play. Yeah. This may look like something that cleans your teeth, but it is Luigi compatible. So many kids <laughs> lost theirs, but it didn't matter. The screen will accept damn near any form of input. Run. But the <laughs> traditional stylus still worked the best, which is why Nintendo liked to include extra stylus eye. Yeah, you can buy some things. The stylus well, industry blew up in the late 2000s. Yeah, Replacement pens were constantly sold, different colors, sizes, but oh, the yeah. issue is, each iteration of the DS had a different stylus design. The entire point of using an official DS stylus is then you can fit it back in its cubby. So if you yeah. buy a replacement stylus pack and it doesn't fit your specific model or you went a little too wild and bought the giant DS pen, well, at that point, you might as well use a dull pencil. Yeah, there's this pen-like stylus release that clicked in and out. Hmm. Why not always leave it clicked out? I, didn't I know must that. preserve the plastic. The final DS iteration, <laughs> the Nintendo DSi XL, came bundled with a fountain pen stylus. The entire point of this model was to appeal to the elderly, and they love pens. This is obviously the most comfortable stylus as it's shaped and sized exactly like a real man's pen. Since the DSi XL was so big and named at Crosswords DS users, having a big extra pen here it made sense as it wasn't intended as the most portable unit. This feels more at home just on a nightstand or something. I didn't realize until now how each DS had a different stylus design, but that's not nearly as egregious as the different chargers. I had to take a night class for this. Yeah, that was okay, so annoying. the original Nintendo DS has the same charger as the Game Boy Advance SP, which is a different charger from the Game Boy Micro, which came after the original DS but before the DS. DS Lite, but the DS Lite had a new charger specific only to it, then the DSi had its own charger that didn't work with the original DS or DS Lite, and this charger was used for the DSi XL, the 3DS, 3DS XL, 2DS, new 3DS, new 3DS XL, and new 2DS XL. See, that one made sense, because it was it, it, it was permanently useful with later iterations of the DS and also the next generation 3DS. The DS Lite, can someone tell me, is there another device that you could actually plug that into, plug the charger into? Is there? Please say in the comments below, is there another device that your DS Lite charger can plug into? Because otherwise, like, what the fuck, Nintendo? <laughs> So the DS Lite has a charger that no other being can accept. They made up for it with the Slot 2 pack. The original DS and DS Lite were compatible with Game Boy Advance cartridges. Not original Game Boy, they aren't God. The Nintendo yes. DS Lite was supposed to be actually presentable, though, so they included this little filler piece to make the design look more flush. What? Well, I didn't ever lose the stylus, I, I, I definitely lost this little... I actually didn't even realize that piece was there. I just I just knew that um you couldn't insert DS, uh, the Game Boy Advance games there. I had no idea that that piece was there. I didn't. I never tried pulling it out. I thought it was just part of the DS. I don't know. It's some thing you detach. What the hell? It's so crazy. Yeah. When it comes to the DS, I had the original DS, two thousand five. First game I played for it was actually Advance Wars Dual Strike. Um, my favorite game for DS was Advance Wars Days of Rune. I already mentioned in a previous video about how much I miss Advance Wars and how excited I am about a remaster of the first two Game Boy Advance games on Switch, but I wish they'd remaster the DS games because they're better, or make a new one because it's about time. And Anyway, um, I would actually, I didn't get the DSi right away, I waited about a year, I think, and I enjoyed it. I liked that it had an online shop like the Wii, um, but 
as I got through the Pokemon games, I hated that I couldn't do the Pal Park, which required um, inserting one of the GBA Pokemon games, uh, you know, Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, or Fire Red, Leaf Green. You had to insert one of those games into the GBA slot while playing Pokemon uh, Diamond and Pearl on the DS or Platinum, whatever, and then you could catch your old Pokemon from the previous generation put them in the new game, new game at the time. But because the DSi didn't have the GBA slot, you couldn't use Pal Park at all. So I was like, screw this, I'm getting rid of it. I actually re sold my DSi on eBay. Seller loved it. The buyer loved it. Um, gave me a wonderful score for that. And a wonderful rating for that. I'd have bought the original DS again. <laughs> then I later bought a DS Lite. And I kept the DS Lite. My ex has the original DS, but that's fine. We kind of agreed to, you know, uh, I didn't really need the original DS. I've had the DS Lite, and she preferred the original DS anyways. Um, anyway, moving on. Of course, I when it comes to the 3DS, I only had the 2DS, the original flat one, um, which I enjoyed a lot. B says it was completely unnecessary. It didn't do anything except make you feel better about yourself. Like, what if people see me on the train? The main reason I pitched this was so then I could just plug whatever in the slot whenever I wanted. In which this is the place the most iconic DS accessories called home. This slot, on top of giving us the ability to play Game Boy Advance games, completely revolutionized handheld really? peripherals. You couldn't do this kind of stuff on the PSP, like the memory expansion pack. What? you, Sony. This was bundled Opera, with the Nintendo DS browser. browser, and what I have here is the DS Lite version. This one will work on the original DS model. For that, you had to go to Nintendo's online shop. Uh, weirdly enough, though, the original DS model's expansion pack works on the DS Lite, but the DS Lite version doesn't work on the original DS, so why wouldn't they just release the original version in stores that works for both? It's because the Nintendo DS browser had no reason to give a sh**. Accessories that use the Game Boy Advance slot, or slot 2 as Congress calls it, are called DS slot Option two, Packs and expand the world of DS software to include Wikipedia. The memory expansion pack okay. is required for the browser and very little else. Zero can be little. Yeah, this was only used for this title specifically because the DS can't run a web browser all on its own. We asked too Obviously. much of it. So why not tackle something a bit more useful? The Rumble Pack. This is a full-on throwback to the Nintendo 64, where it too had a Rumble Pack, allowing for supported games to feel the power of a seizure. Some Game Boy <laughs> Color and Advance titles had built-in Rumble features, but of course that cost more to manufacture. You had to design a cartridge around that kind of thing. With the mm. DS, having an optional separate accessory meant more games could theoretically support it, like Picross DS. It's like I'm really there. Roughly. 50 games supported the Rumble Pack, and most of them were released from 2005 to 2007. I think many developers and publishers realized most people weren't getting enough out of Rumble in these games to warrant plugging it in slot 2, so why bother even supporting it? But the Rumble is more impressive than I expected, though. It's fairly nuanced, kind of like the HD Rumble in the Nintendo Switch controllers. It's not going to blow your mind, but it's a fairly detailed little Rumble. It's a shame more games don't support it, though I completely understand as I'm not going to go out of my way to ever use this again. That's right, <laughs> I'm taking a stand. If we're talking DS accessories, the plug into slot 2 though, we gotta talk arthritis. This is one everybody remembers. Even if you never owned it, the Guitar Hero Guitar Grip was THE DS accessory. Shows how much creativity mm. developers had on the DS. How do we take Guitar Hero and put it on the platform without taking yeah. away everything that makes a Guitar Hero, i.e. the guitar? Well, you f*** up your wrist, that's how. Plugging this into the GBA <laughs> slot and holding the DS on its side, we have a Guitar Hero game. Now with one less button. I can be pissed about that. It works incredibly well, though. I'm just awful at Guitar Hero. My hand-eye coordination yeah. from Guitar Hero buttons to screen Good. just never fully developed. But that doesn't take I away from sure how I'm special this device is. It even came with a guitar pick stylus that fits into the grip itself. This hmm. was a pretty popular title on the DS, and spawned really? a few sequels, including huh. Band Hero, which also used the guitar grip, but had a drum pad as well. This isn't nearly as endearing. It's a silicon sleeve you put your DS Lite into. God, these kind of cases always feel like somebody just wiped their nose with them. You slide it all on and you have drum pads. It works. It's kind of cute. Just not nearly as ingenious as the guitar grip, but mm. a worthy attempt at playing drums on the go. And keep in mind, yeah, these worthy. accessories were made with the DS Lite in mind. The guitar grip requires this adapter to work on the original DS because of design differences, and the yeah. band hero drums just straight up won't work. And if you try mm. to play with the guitar grip on the DSi or DSi XL, reality sets in. They removed the GBA <laughs> slot, but included an SD card slot, and as a kid, I had an idea for a version of Guitar Hero on tour for the DSi that connected to that port. <laughs> I'm proud of that idea. <laughs> to give the DSi credit, there were some games exclusive to it that wouldn't work on a DS Lite or right. DS, like games that use the cameras. But two games found a way. Face training and... 
Face training. This game focuses on strengthening your facial muscles, giving you a tight smile. And the only way for it to accurately insult you is with a camera. The <laughs> face and scan camera was only released in Japan and came bundled with face training alongside a stand for the DS. You can pop it on here sideways and use this thing on a desk more easily, and it's pretty surreal to see camera footage on a DS or DS Lite. It works <laughs> across both models, even the original DS. Since the device fits flush with the model, you have a jump scare option. Game face Boy training camera. was later released no. for the DSi in Europe with no need for the face scans. scans. Looking with the stand for the system, though. But nothing will be the magnetic stand, released only in Japan. This was primarily marketed alongside games like Personal Trainer Cooking due to the fact the magnets can turn any fridge into a smart fridge. The stand <laughs> plugs into the GBA slot and holds the DS up that way. It's like somebody holding up by your nostrils. Ooh. Yeah, you can set it up for at a table by opening up the bottom and adjusting the angle a bit. It comes with a dangling stylus. Your question was answered. But here's a similarly designed accessory, <laughs> the slide controller, bundled with the Japan exclusive slide adventure Mag Kid. It receives power from slot two and turns your DS into a mouse. Nobody told them the definition of necessary. This is weird. So you move the DS around and control the character on screen as if the DS is a computer mouse, but the screen for the computer mouse is a computer mouse. That's and it so works. Bizarre. The slide controller <laughs> is one of the most bizarre things Nintendo has pushed out just because of how seemingly unneeded it is. But it makes for an experience that can't really be replicated elsewhere. I mean, a computer, hmm. sure, but just moving the entire device around like a mouse makes this wholly unique. Speaking of motion-based gimmicks, Activision released a motion pack for the DS. This was a third-party accessory giving the DS some motion capabilities, specifically for Tony Hawk's motion. I moved the DS, I moved Tony Hawk in the game. It works okay, but at the end of the day, it just makes you want a real voodoo doll. Sega so released a card reader that plugged into the slot, only in Japan, supporting just three titles. This is pretty much the same deal as Nintendo's e-reader for the Game Boy Advance, but even more useless. I don't have any of the games or cards for it, but if it's anything like the e-reader, run. Ooh. The Easy Piano was a third-party accessory that turned your DS into like two weights of a piano. All right, here's the deal with this. This is a cute That's toy a that piano. is completely bundled and supported by the wrong game. Easy Piano is mostly a mini game collection just about music and when it does use the piano, it's like mostly just a noisemaker. It's kind of cool to hear piano noises from the DS after hitting some keys, but that's like kind of all there is to do with this thing. Rock mm. Band 3, that featured keyboards as playable instruments. It got a DS version that used no accessories. This would have been perfect for that game, it but no. Ever heard of a Greek tragedy? <laughs> Well, now you have. Okay, that's fine. I mean, this is a dumb piano anyways. If you really want to learn piano, there are far better and more realistic options out there to do so with. So let's talk about a DS accessory with real world applications. I am of course talking about diabetes. The <laughs> Bayer Digit Blood <laughs> Glucose Meter plugs into the GBA slot. Naturally, it is a glucose meter after all. Now I couldn't get diabetes in time wow. to discuss how this actually works, but I don't really need to. It reads your blood sugar levels and is designed to give kids with diabetes more incentive to read them more often. So <laughs> alongside this device, you get a diabetes turn-based RPG, knock em down's world fair. You get power-ups in the game for checking your blood sugar levels. The GBA slot deserves an award. There's so much it can do. Help with diabetes, put the DS on a fridge, with Tony Hawk? We can even turn our GBA <laughs> slot based devices into iPods with the Nintendo MP3 player. It's just a GBA cartridge, but it released during the DS's reign and mainly pushes them on the box. It's a cartridge with an SD card slot and headphone jack. You pop it in and you can play your media files this way. The name Nintendo MP3 player was a localization of the Play-In series of MP3 players Nintendo released for the Game Boy Advance only in Japan, with the Nintendo MP3 player only releasing in Europe. I would have killed for something like this back in the day. Just seeing video files play via games on the DS was mind-blowing. There were a cool, handful yeah. more GBA slot-based accessories for the DS. Better released a paddle console. controller, which is apparently incredible for games like Arkanoid, That's cool. but I couldn't find one. I got the diabetes meter, leave me be. The last one I have here is the pedometer for my weight loss coach. It really makes you think, why don't most pedometers have this plug? It's interesting my weight loss coach comes with a pedometer while my stop smoking coach doesn't come with Nicorette. But it's just a pedometer. <laughs> okay. When you wear it, you have the audacity to flex Nicorette. the Ubisoft logo to everybody. So yeah, it's worth it. Ubisoft did a lot of these life help games during this era, I believe they stopped because they realized they weren't good at it. Develop with a professional <laughs> nutritionist. Just one. But pedometers were a big deal on the Nintendo DS. It's probably why Nintendo built one into the Nintendo 3DS. They love health. Especially dog health. Personal Trainer Walking, mm. part of the same series as Personal Trainer Cooking. You gotta burn it off somehow. This comes with the mm -hmm. activity meter. Yes, you can track the dog's life rhythm. This game is pretty interesting because it actually includes its own meat creator from the Wii in the game, and the <laughs> game cartridge itself is an infrared sensor. It actually concerned me when I saw it. I thought it was a bootleg since the cartridge is so much darker than usual. I never knew this <laughs> is what the black market was like. Nah, it's darker <laughs> because it's an IR sensor and it interacts with okay. the activity meter okay. this way. But did I mention you get two of them? Two activity meters, 
Two clips, huh. too hard. Much like my weight loss coach's <laughs> pedometer hard. is a pedometer, though it is much slimmer and more discreet than Ubisoft's. Watch out, Fitbit. But the more well-known pedometer for the Nintendo DS was the Pokewalker. Bundled with Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver, yeah. this was a pedometer that allowed that. you to take your Pokemon from the game for walks, which would open up in-game content based on how many steps you take. This is obviously a gimmick that. thrown in there I to appease parents though. who were mortified at the fact their children weren't using their legs. So they put this out using the same IR technology as the activity meter. In the end, the Pokewalker ended up being one of the most accurate pedometers ever created at the time. See, Nintendo was at their best when they have no reason to be. The Pokewalker <laughs> was later repurposed for Wii Fit U. They used the exact same shell and technology, but one thing the Pokewalker has in comparison is that it can be misread as Pokewalker. Keep in track here. Speaking of Pokemon, okay. here we have Learn with Pokemon. No! Learn with Pokemon Typing <laughs> no! Adventure is an educational game for the Nintendo DS, only released in Europe and Japan. This title implies that other Pokemon educational games were intended to follow this, but you don't need further education as long as you can type Chim Char. This came with the Nintendo Wireless Keyboard, a very broad name for an accessory that only worked with this one title. It's a Bluetooth yeah. keyboard, which does mean you can use it on other devices, but the DS doesn't have Bluetooth, so they injected Bluetooth into the game cartridge. <laughs> Just the different things they're willing to do to make things work on the DS amazes me. The game also yeah. comes with a stand for the DS, which is nice, but you can just set it up like a laptop on a desk. That works perfectly fine. Okay. It's just a typing game. Type the Pokemon names. I may not know how to type any other words, but now Chimchar I can do blindfolded. After <laughs> learning, it's time to go recreational, or in other words, recreate. A Nintendo DS TV tuner. Yeah, you could watch television on your DS. Wow. Only in Japan, but this isn't a new idea. Other handhelds have had TV tuners released for them, and portable TV sets have been a thing for decades. This would have been awesome when I had my DS Lite. I, re I remember, uh... Back when the the DS Lite was first released, uh, my then best friend and I, Spencer and I, we saw a video on YouTube that was like showcasing the reveal of it in Japan, and like the uh, captions made it look like the, the captions were so messed up. It was intentional, like they make it, oh to, to scam you even further and. Like, it made it look like as if they said stuff like, oh, wow, I can, you know, go on the internet with the DS Lite. I can't wait to surf some porn with this. <laughs> I was like, oh, my gosh. And it did mention the, being able to watch television on it. I remember that being mentioned at that time, and it was way back. So, um, you know, I might actually have to look up that video. That video was pretty hilarious, actually. <laughs> it's kind of like how uh, that, you know, scene in that, movie with Hitler in it where he's yelling and ranting and they always put different subtitles at the bottom to represent what he's saying even though he's clearly not actually saying that. It was like that except with a Japanese news story about um, the DS Lite. I remember seeing one of my friends getting a smartphone that was able to receive digital TV signals and they could watch f***ing Nickelodeon at the funeral. When I was a kid, <laughs> the coolest mean. thing ever would have been to watch TV wherever I wanted. In the backseat of a car at school, it was the coolest idea ever. And if I was in Japan and wanted to be laughed at in public, it could have been a reality. <laughs> this... <laughs> doesn't work here. But if I was in Japan in 2007, it might have. Even if no signal yeah. comes in, it's a really cool nugget of Nintendo history. Just seeing the software, it feels right at home with other Nintendo products at the time. So this one's pretty fun. A calligraphy pen for the game huh. Calligraphy Training, only released in Japan. This game teaches how to properly write out kanji because it ain't easy. Like what, that's not a box? It's all in the amount of brush strokes <laughs> you use. Box. And with the regular DS <laughs> stylus, you can play it. But it defeats the purpose of the title. It's genuinely here to teach proper calligraphy, so the included pen, while nothing special, it's literally just a longer stylus modeled after a brush, it definitely helps. The feeling mm. of writing in this game feels uncanny. It's so natural, but what if they went a bit further? What if it supported the rumble pack? I'll stay out of politics. <laughs> There's another stylus alternative on the DS, the thumb strap. And so it comes to this. The DS had a few 3D titles on it, like but just a single D-pad, so to make these games feel more natural, Nintendo would implement touchscreen controls, but to make them feel even more more natural, they included this wrist strap with the original model. It has this little piece of plastic at the end. You wrap it around your thumb, and you have Nintendo's answer to having no analog stick. They could have just put in an analog stick. You go to yeah. all this trouble to make up for the lack of a stick, which just makes me ask, why didn't you just add a stick? I refuse to take baths. I instead bathe in body spray. Now, there was a third-party stylus in the works <laughs> called the Smart Stylus by PDP. I don't think this ever released. Rather, it was only shown to the press and was more so a tech demo. It would connect to an mm. adapter plugged into the GBA slot and would allow for the stylus to rumble and light up and play sounds based on the game being played. It was supposed to be okay. bundled with the game Squeeballs. And? I don't think it was. A game called Squeeballs <laughs> Party was released and there was a bundle containing a stylus, 
but it wasn't the smart stylus, which leads me to believe this never came out. There's yeah. the direction sensor probably. card, which who the hell knows what this is? This was probably going to be a first party peripheral or a variant of the Nintendo DS game card that could track motion. I believe it was used for this stargazing application, but that never released here in North America. At least a headset did. The Nintendo DS headset! That's right. Nintendo basically refused to make a wireless headset for any game console except the DS. You could use this with Pokemon and Brain Age. You do math like a bitch. Yeah, so very few games actually use this for voice chat. Games like Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, Metroid Prime Hunters, Advance Wars Days of Ruin, but you could use it as just a regular microphone for games that simply use the microphone. I personally feel like this is a fairly pointless accessory. It's not like there were a ton of voice chat enabled games anyways, and even then, they pretty much all just used the built-in mic, which yeah, that's gonna be worse, but who the hell was expecting Diaz voice chat to be good in the first place? Mm, Here we have a cleaning yeah. kit. This helps us get dust and grime out of both cartridge slots. Me personally, I'm okay. I have a tub. Screen protectors, <laughs> yep, you need those, especially for the bottom screen. Uh, but I never really was a big screen protector guy. I don't know, that I consider any scratch and stories behind them. Uh, this was when I was a jackass. This was just when I was a f***ing idiot. Some accessories have both Wii <laughs> and DS branding, like the official Wi-Fi USB connector and some SD cards, which, yeah, branded SD card, so everybody can see you have an official Nintendo SD card when it's always going to be inside the system. Well, that's pretty much most of the Nintendo DS accessories ever released. Or at least the first 10% of them. Starter packs, pretty much any combination of case, stylus, game card container, charger you can possibly think of. They were sold and usually endorsed and licensed by Nintendo. Like the starter kit. Or the starter kit. Or the starter kit. Or the essentials kit. Or the essential kit. Character-based accessories for if the TV tuner wasn't enough for bullies. Game okay. card storage <laughs> units. These hold one each will ensure you don't lose your game cards. They're the same size as one. Stylus packs? Crayola! These support the claims that crayons can do anything. Game and go kits for when you really need a case, but you really need Howie Mandel. There are so <laughs> many accessory packs. They're pretty much variations of the exact same thing. Value pack. Okay, so the stylus is longer than my leg. Six game card cases. Each of them hold only one each. So does this really help me travel with them? Does this help me travel with multiple at once? Each of these can only hold one game card each. Does this stop me from swallowing them? No! <laughs> Why would you even do that? You're weird. <laughs> All right, well, that put me in a much better mood after what I just dealt with trying to set up my live streaming earlier today, but, uh, and failing to do so. Um, anyways, uh, thank you so much for watching. That was a lot, that was a blast. Um, that took a lot longer than expected, but, um, once again, another hilarious episode of Scott the Was. I appreciate, uh, what he does. He's just such an entertaining guy. He's just so funny, and, um... You know, I didn't really dabble in any in DS accessories, even though I loved playing DS, you know, back in the day. I mean, I was, uh, I turned 18 in 2006, and not too long before that, I uh, had gotten my first DS. And even though, I, you know, as a child in the 90s, I played Game Boy a lot, I feel like I actually have more fond memories of playing DS than Game Boy, which is crazy, because typically my fondest memories are of playing like consoles from the 90s, um, you know, nostalgia thing. But when it comes to handhelds, I had more fond memories of the DS than the Game Boy, than the original Game Boy, or even the Game Boy Advance for that matter. Um, it's just, it was just such, there's just so many awesome games on the DS, and it was that next step. I mean, the DS has better graphics than the N64, which was really impressive at the time. Um, and it, it was just awesome. And, but these accessories, like, I, I just never really, really gotten into them. The only thing, I, I, I guess it doesn't count as an accessory, but I used to have an action replay for my DS. That was pretty fun. That was pretty awesome. I, um, to make sure I could play Pokemon Black online and not have to just retrain new Pokemon so I could actually have, you know, different choices than just the, st the six I played throughout the game with, I actually used a cheat on Action Replay to multiply the Pokemon experience points by like 5,000 times the normal amount or something, or no, it was like over a 1,000 times the normal amount, so when I, you know, beat an, an opposing Pokemon, they'd level, my Pokemon would level up by like 20 or something, <laughs> you know, and I was like, and, and especially since, you know, in Pokemon Black and going to that big city that has like the, uh, thing in the middle with the basketball the soccer or whatever and go against different trainers there 
on a daily basis and just keep leveling up your Pokemon that way. It was perfect for that. Um, unfortunately, I didn't really play the game online that often. I wish I did more often, but oh well, shit happens. That said, um, were there any uh, DS accessories you tried out? Uh, any that Scott reviewed? Any that he didn't mention? Any that... Uh, have you checked out an action replay before? Um, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. Click that bell icon to add me notifications. I uh, need as you know as many views as I can get. I just recently got monetized, and I'd like to hold on to that. And in fact, even improve upon it. And uh, my Sonic movie review is in the works. I will get it done. I plan to have it done. It's just going to take some time. Um, it's nearly there though. It's making a lot of progress. Um, and sh it looks like I'll probably have it done in July. I hate to say that. I promised it'd be done in May. Then my computer was out of commission for a month because I had to wait for a particular part so I could charge my computer again. Um, then, uh, I just been so busy in June, in, in June that I couldn't get it done in this month, but it's nearly there. It'll probably be done in July. Anyways, thank you so much for watching.